Hi, welcome back everybody to Lois Hook Pottery. It's really great to get back on the old camera, get the camera working and uh, start getting back in the pottery, uh, especially now the weather has just started to pick up and warm up, which is great. Now I have a number of videos that are in the camera um, that are um, pieces that I have made over the winter um, and I have a kiln unloading for you today. Now in the kiln unloading is a few of the pieces that I have got videos that I will add up showing you me actually turning them up, up making them on the wheel and joining them together and then the glazing process. But I will put up the, um, the kiln opening first as a bit of a taster for you. Now, interestingly enough, I now have the new iPhone 13 Pro Max and on it, it has a cinematic mode and I can't see the lights flickering because it's taking layers and layers of video. So I'm going to try and see if I can move the camera back for this and do the kiln and loading using that. And it would be good to know your thoughts because I know the lights flickering in this room is a little bit of a pain for everybody. Um, and it'd be nice to see how it works. So, right, let's get this kiln open and have a look and see what's inside. Okay, so... All I've really done over the uh, winter has been focusing a little bit more on making more lamp bases. I really made, as I said, a conscious decision that I really want to do more pieces that matter to me. Um, and I was looking at handmade pottery uh, lamp bases online and I found somebody that had done three orbs. So one of the videos you will see after this is me trying to work out in my head how to make a three orb light. And I actually made three of them. Now this is one that has been bisked. I'll bring it to the camera. Let's have a look, I'll do my usual way. So we're too close, aren't we? So maybe I can do it back here. Um, this is one that I have um, made out of three pieces. This has been bisque fired. My biggest issue was somebody has to get their hand all the way to the top to put in the, um, the wire. Um, so that was my biggest nightmare that I suddenly realised when I was manufacturing them. And um, I've made three different ones. This was joined together with a very hard line. One was joined together and then I, and then I added clay around the, the joins and the other one was trimmed at the bottom. So we've got two in the kiln um, as we speak. So let's pop that back. Okay then, let's uh, have a look and go inside. So one piece that I am so happy with is the fact that I have done, I love this piece, I showed you this piece last uh, year um, when I got it out of the kiln, the um, cookie had been stuck inside and it forced a crack and I wanted to really re replicate that in the form of a lamp and brilliant, absolutely chuffed a bit with this so look at that I've, uh, with all my lamps now I'm putting a uh, a clay base so that I could get my hand in but it is actually meaning that the clay is staying um, at the bottom fixed to that shape I left a gap a five mil gap with the um, iron luster uh, but it did run a little bit and I did actually I do have to, to touch that up there's a little bit of, of glaze that's sort of gone over there but look at that let me come forward a bit for you so this is a base coat of three layers of iron luster and then i have used a uh, blue rutile and um smoky merlot in up sort of squiggles if you like pa a pattern and i've put uh, oatmeal over the top of all the patterns and I have got a video of how I glaze this so that is going to be absolutely wonderful got to find the right lamp uh, for that haven't I the right lampshade so I did a bowl um, we've often talked haven't we about my kiln firing at a high cone six even venturing into a cone seven um, and one of the glazes, I've got to check what I've used on this, um, but I couldn't believe it. When I lifted uh, this off of my shelf, textured turquoise, which is what I typically use for the bottom of my bowls when I'm using the ancient copper, 
it just had all slipped all of it had slipped off and onto the kiln shelf now what i would say is this had been sitting for i don't know four months five months or whatever and it is made out of um a different glaze a different clay i think this is made out of a slightly grogged um clay that uh, was one that i'd actually used for um making products outside but also with it sitting whether it was dust we've had this conversation dust or whatever um but the, it, i've got pinholes all over it let me come in to you um i have a video of making this um and i'd put in the swirls i'd use textured turquoise on the top i believe what i had done is a repeat of um video i'd like to say 16 where i had used the copper around the outside I had done three layers of sapphire float. I had then done, um, I'm going to say, textured turquoise in a band with oatmeal around the outside and then textured turquoise in the middle. And then, as you can see, on the back, I had used the uh, copper with the textured turquoise. Now, the conversation in the past had been about my dirty hands, whether, whether glaze slips because you know it's slipping because it's not adhering to the to the clay and as you can see it is really has slipped there i also have a lot of pinholes which to me can be the dirt and um maybe the, the kiln too hot i haven't got pinholes in the middle with the textured turquoise i have got pin pinholes around this band here so a bit of a shame really it's maybe a refi i'm not sure what i can do with the bottom of that um but yeah the kiln shelf is in a mess which is very very um upsetting but there you go that is life um, and it does show really that stuff shouldn't just be left sitting with glaze on or not glaze on you know you need to work through a pot um as it's ready for you to to, to when it's prepared now on to the good stuff you guys have been watching in the past one of my projects of um, using a red glaze and then putting copper wire on the pots and seeing what it does. If you remember, I used a mesh and I used a wire on this. I did get some pinholes. I um, used a celadon underneath on this one, but I had a little vase that I produced and then I had a gent that bought both of my last lamps and he was really desperate for me to try and make him a, a lamp base that had red. So I went ahead and um, I've got this, uh, a full video of me putting the colours on this one, but I am absolutely so pleased with this piece. Now, I'm not sure whether there is enough marks on it with the, with the wire, so what I've done, I've used, this is the Scarva Terracolor Glaze. The top is the orange. The middle is the red and the bottom is what they call a deep red. The bottom is textured amber brown. I have carved the, the, the piece to give us some texture. And then I've added pieces of copper wire that are only um, three mil two to three mil long and know that it's going to run let me bring this pot in closer to you absolutely chuffed to bits with this and what i'm loving is the different lay different colors of red as well i mean that is beautiful I've got some blues as well in the in the copper wire but i know i get this metallic effect with this green and then the textured amber brown at the bottom so i love that absolutely love that and i and i think i've why i kept that this this with me why i kept it is so that i can redo this i want to duplicate this again i want to ask him if he likes this one if he wants more uh, or something slightly different then i will redo it and i will keep the other one for um for my house so absolutely gorgeous have to find some space so 
So the next, the next one, it was a real, real make it up as I go along type um, glaze work. I basically, when I uh, you did my work on this one, I've done it in stripes, and I've then gone and poured red glaze over it to see what I would get. Now the reaction is just out of this world. Um, let me bring this out of the kiln and show you this one. I absolutely love this. Now, what I've done is I've used um, the, oh, it will come to me, dark magma at the bottom. You can see I've used copper, a copper band around the bottom as well above the dark magma because I know that some of these glazes may be going to run but this is a whole mishmash. The middle one is Palladian. Um, there is, let me tell you what they're actually using this vintage gold. You can see actually some of the gold that is actually on that one, vintage gold on that one, going up there. Um, so we've got, uh, let me have a look. I've got saturated gold. That's what that gold one is. Vintage gold, Palladian saturation metallic um, and then I did matte black and then as I said I put red all over this now interestingly enough I probably put an, too many layers of the dark magma on the bottom because it has dro dropped a lot and it has bubbled up and I've just got to knock those little bits off of that but again it was really about having a texture at the bottom but I mean as I said, there is a video of me putting the glazes on this because the video... Oh, and Cosmic Tea Dust. Look, Cosmic Tea Dust. And these marks are the red. You can actually see the swirls of red on this and how it's spread in different ways on different... I mean, but look at this, Saturation Metallic. Saturation Metallic. It just is amazing. So that is, so far, just... One of my best pieces, I think, at having the nerve to try something really different and getting a really great reaction out. Okay, I will get this kiln shelf off and come back to you. Okay, so underneath the kiln shelf is just some mugs and some planters, actually. But has anybody out there had any success with uh, Mako... Um, the white glaze, the cracking glaze, the Mako Crackle White. I followed all of the instructions, uh, three coats, and in fact I've done it as a dip and as a coat, and I've done it before, and I've not got the crackle yet. Just wondered out there what people has, has you know, has achieved. So I did a little heart, a heart jug, actually, and I put in it the, the red, and then I put around the outside the red as well. And on this, this is painted on uh, the, the crackle glaze and no, no crackle. And actually I had a little orb that I dipped in the crackle glaze because I thought this would be a really good way, little, just a little silly thing I made. Great way to see what the crackle glaze does. So this is actually dipped in because it does say on it, you can dip. Um, and again, no no reaction of a crackle at all which is really disappointing but you know a little little love jug um quite sweet quite like that one um and then very very basic very very simple some um planters and this all in the same color this is wasabi celadon which we we like very simple little planter. I then did another planter in uh, my one of my favourite glazes, which is Blue Midnight, which you can't see on there, um, which has got lovely tech because I left my finger marks in this one, finger textures, just threw them really quickly. How lovely is that Blue Midnight with the fact that it's actually giving itself some some marks back nice and then uh mugs 
I wanted some house mugs. I really loved the mugs that I've done in the past using the lava fleck clay. So I basically made a range of those. Um, so exactly the same as before. God, that's nearly got down the bottom there, hasn't it? Um, which is lovely. I left it thick at the bottom on pur purpose. This will be uh, sapphire float over iron luster. Um, then I have done Smoky Merlot. These need a bit of a sand. The uh, the the lava fleck clay when it comes out the kiln is quite sharp in places. These are a little bit smaller than the other ones that I did before. I did interestingly enough, and I'm wondering. I'm going to look at that plate. This is um, this is a uh, blue stone. And I do get problems with pitting on bluestone with it perhaps being too hot. And I have actually got that on there. The bluestone has actually um, got some pinholes on the inside, which I can't really, it means I can't really use uh, that for tea and coffee. Might be able to sand them off and might, or might have to refire. Okay, what else have we got? The one the other way. Um, I think that's toasted sage with iron luster over the top. Yeah, I love that. I love that glaze, how that does that reaction inside. Love that. And then I have got, oh, lavender. This is a Mako and, um, I've done two Mako glazes. I've done Norse Blue, I think. Yeah, Norse Blue and uh, Lavender Mist. Lavender Mist actually is really nice on the inside, but it's not, it's burnt off a bit on the outside. So maybe heat of the kiln too, too much. Or actually it looks like I needed to do another, another layer, doesn't it? I've done, it's really nice on the inside, but I wonder if I've only done two layers on the outside. So I've not given it enough glaze layers. Um, yeah, and then the last one was Norse Blue. But the Norse Blue has gone on it quite nicely. There it is. So I bought myself um, some porcelain. And I've also got some black clay in the garage that I think would be quite nice to have a little play with again. Um, so, um, you know, watch this space again. As I said, I've got a few... I'm going to do part one, part two, part three with regard to these two um, and the, the other lamp, how I put the glazes on. And actually, I'm going to embed that into this video, I think, so you can at least see um, what they look like before they were fired. So remember, if you like what I do, please tell your friends about me. Like, should subscribe and press the bell so you get notifications when I post anything up. Uh, sorry I haven't been with you over the winter. Um, most of you know my story about being really busy with my mum and everything. And actually I just found that I needed time for myself. I've had a few holidays and, and caught my breath. So now I've got to get myself back in the pottery and uh, share those experiences with you. So thank you very much for coming on board and watching what I've done. And if you got to the end of the video, well done you. Um, anything you need, questions, I try and answer everybody's questions, so please write anything you need to below and I will come back to you as soon as I see it. Thanks very much, everybody.
Okay, so we're at the stage now where we've got the orange on the top, red, deep red, and textured amber brown. All has had three coats. So I'm now going to have a look at, um, I think I'll let this dry and then we will have a look at putting the copper on tomorrow. What I've decided to do, because I, I really think a bit of glaze would be good to stick it in, I've just got opened up a, a pot of clear, clear glaze. And if I get a piece of the, that's it stuck on there now. So there's one bit there. We could have them at every time there's a rise, which would be sort of three at that top area there. As well because that now is stuck in there and that will draw in that So I've decided that this needed something extra. So I'm going to put, let me get it going round first. I'm going to put and then whether it'll work or not. I'm liking the top a lot. Not so sure about all the way around the bottom of this bit. Let's do that again. 